So, hot take for the day. Anima- anime is an acquired taste, and it's not for me. And there's no way that Milo and Brandon can convince me that I will like it. <laughs> okay. Is it is it too late to back out of this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> um, like, I haven't fully committed to it yet, but... So, here's my here's the first thing I'm gonna say. Uh, what anime have you watched so far? I'll stop you there. Um, yeah, go for it. For the all, the first and only anime that I've ever actually watched is Spirited Away. I enjoyed it. I I, I thought it was okay, but uh, it's like a movie. Yeah. Spirited Away. I yeah. haven't even seen that one. Oh oh wow. Is that like a kind of older one, like '90s? It's definitely not, not your sure. style of anime. Just put it that really way. okay. I, I think it's probably Spirit, a good well. Movie. I like. I, I watch some of it. I do like a broad range of anime because, like, obviously you have the actions. You have Demon Slayer, Dragon Ball, which is like top tier, and then um, I like My Hero. Yeah. But then like Death Note, that's kind of like. See, I'm immediately uninterested. Okay, but yeah, the you more you talk about it, no, 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 I'm, no, no, I'm no. talking to Milo. I'm talking to Milo. All right. <laughs> the, but the more you talk about it, the less. So Spirited I Away. Tell me. Is that like 2000s, 2010s, 2010s? 2001. Uh, oh, 2001. 2001. Okay. Okay. So the last anime that you've watched came out over 20 years ago. Sure. Okay. So. Yeah, it's super cool now, dude. Yeah, there's like swords and stuff. No, honestly, in my opinion, <laughs> the best anime, which is yeah. Dragon Ball Z, is actually from the 90s. Okay. And then Akira classic, obviously. So it was first Dragon Ball, then Dragon Ball Z. Dragon right. Ball, Dragon Ball Z. They remade Dragon Ball Super, and then there's like a billion movies of them. Okay. So it's going to get a little too emotional with this. You know, I'm just going to be <laughs> flailing around. Um, so it's it's tough for me to hear that, for sure. Um, <laughs> I don't, Mila was okay with it. Right Can you least, really yeah. get into yeah. your emotions right now of how this is making How you are feel? you feeling? Okay, look, like, I'll stop you there. Again? I think, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I think I could come around on it, but it has to be very specific. And I, I what I don't like about it is the people that like it, because there's a certain oh no you're a right, certain you're right. type of person you're right. Especially with my hero, Milo sent me a video a while back that like it was some sort of like, kind of like Comic Con or whatever where a ton of people got together sure. and they were asking what is the most like toxic like group or whatever, and it was yeah. My Hero Academia. Okay, which a lot of people don't like that anime. I'm touching the table. I really like that one, but like. Like I can definitely see why, when you look at it, it can be a little bit like pervy at times. I guess because it's because yeah. it's kind of like you're getting there. Warmer. Yeah, it's kind of like I, I totally understand what you're saying. I totally understand. And it's like all anime except Attack on Titan, which is the best in my opinion. That yeah. is that is the best. You anime. actually would enjoy Attack on Titan, but you can't yeah. start with Attack on sure. Titan. So here's the thing, you, yeah. I, because I tried anime, I tried Attack on Titan. I think this was back in high school. I couldn't, do, and I tried anime mm-hmm. or anime. I tried Japanese sub. So it's like the actual Japanese. Is that what like Squid Game was like, where it was? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's way off and it doesn't make sense. Oh well, you watched the English version of that, right? Yeah. Okay, so with anime, even if you watch the English dub, they are able to like cut out p- pieces, so it's not like the wording keeps going and then their mouths keep moving or whatever. It's all, it's all together. So I think that's a plus. Um, I lost my train of thought of what I was talking about with Attack on Titan. So I tried watching it back in high school, and it was like way too much, dude. First of all, that one's like super heavy, like emotionally. It's just super heavy. It's super violent, too. I don't want to get in my feels, though. So Same. But like, it's just, it's so good. Brandon, did you it's cry? Just, all I'm saying, okay. If, no, I don't think I cried. We're, but if like, we're all at our house and it's on. Yeah. I'll, I'll watch it. So sure. I'm Milo not going to go out of my way. Milo and I are going to start you with Demon Slayer because I think that is the most like... He's not going to watch it though, dude. I'll no, watch it. Oh, we'll, like, with he'll you watch it. He'll, okay. He's just going to On my own? No. Okay. No. Here's so, the thing. Saying anime is an acquired taste is like saying movies are an acquired taste. I disagree. It has a certain style, but so do movies. No. No, yeah, they do. Here, they do. Yeah, they do. Here's my cuts, here's my take. Cuts in movies. Yeah. The the story arc. There's a lot of commonality between like all Hollywood movies. So to say, I, I movies or anime is an acquired taste is, is the same as yeah. Movies. I the same. see. I feel though because anime is such a it it's such a, a specific um like just style that like I feel like. No matter if it's action, 
drama, whatever, like it all feels the same. Whereas a movie, how much anime have you watched? I was about to ask, what what have you watched? I actually haven't watched. Okay, yet. <laughs> all right. Okay. So from my so from my <laughs> outside point of view, I think right, we, right. we won this That's, one. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I'm just saying you can't wow. you can't knock until you try it. <laughs> I mean, I I will say, do you do you consider the Last Airbender anime? No, that's cartoon. What? It's yeah, animated. It's an, okay. it's an American anything, take on it. Yeah, if anything, oh, okay. it's like an American cartoon that is inspired by Japanese anime. Yeah. Oh, but I think okay. moral of the story is that we we can't be convinced until True. you try it. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. I did I did try with you guys at the gym the other day. Well, no, no, no! You you jumped into a you jumped into a AMV, an yeah. anime music video. There was some guy creating some huge Evil tornado. containment. <laughs> yeah, no. It was pretty chaotic. It was very chaotic. That's because you have no context of it. Like yeah. you're just jumping in at one random scene. Like, yeah, exactly. It's one. It's it's a thing. Like I would want to show you guys the action scenes, like Tengen versus Gyutiro. I would say is my favorite fight even though demon slayer isn't my favorite anime overall it's my favorite fight scene but mm -hmm. like i couldn't just show you that because you wouldn't there'd be no context you'd be like oh this is kind of cool but you wouldn't have any context you don't know the characters sure. you don't know how awesome those two are especially they're like the two best characters in the show um <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you're doing sure. good brandon i what you're doing good thank you thank you so I'm just geeking. Like I feel like I'm trying to like make a point, but I'm also like, oh, it's so cool too. Dude, this is like the change my mind and segments where it's like I just let you kind of go off, and the end of it's like, no. Yeah, now it's just me geeking. Just shut him down. But it also, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like it's very popular. Even Luke has talked about this. Like it's pretty popular amongst like the gym community. Yeah, like, you'd be surprised the amount of people, especially guys in the gym. I would say a decent portion of those guys. Are into anime. Yeah, yeah. Seabum. I just saw a recent video of Seabum that said that he watches anime during, um, like, prep or something. I don't know, and it just gets him like hyped. So, huh. I think right now to sum it up for me, if it was like the last thing on, for like a streaming service where like the Wi-Fi was <laughs> the down and it was thing. it was downloaded, I would watch it. But it's definitely not gonna be like my top pick. I would watch it with with you two, Milo yeah. and Brandon. Yeah, right. and I, I think. We, right. can, we can come to that compromise. I think at the next opportunity that we get, I would say we try to get into Demon Slayer. You have to, just like any show, you got to give it a yeah, little bit. Because do. at the beginning, yeah, you're going to be like brand new to it. It's going to be kind of quirky. We'll start you off with English, English dub because you're not, not, not quirky. ready. For, um, did I say quirky? No, I meant quirky. Well, I meant, I meant cringy. No, no, I meant quirky. Yeah. Here, here's an interesting thing. I just, I just thought of this. Um, so you know how Star Wars had Star Wars Visions? That just came out or whatever. Mm -hmm. Is that, are some of those considered anime? Because I remember one of them, it's like the samurai dude. Like he's, he's a, um, he's a Jedi. Yeah. And you know, that's I, like a, like a drawn, um, one. And that, that one's pretty cool. But yeah, that's another American take on anime. I mean, maybe, yeah, yeah. I think that was made in America. I'd say that's an American too. take on anime as yeah. well. I will get yeah. back to you that, on that. That's one. bearable in my opinion. Like that, was, you watched I, that one? I watched like a couple episodes. Was okay, right? I right. haven't seen it, so I wouldn't be able to say like, oh, oh. if you like this and you like anime. But yeah, to to say for me, it was my least favorite Star Wars that I've seen. Okay, but it was very interesting. But that's because it was a different take on it. it yeah, it was better. Star Wars, and they took it, and they threw in some animation, mm -hmm. and that's kind of yeah. what they did. But it was no, all that's right. that's fair because we've seen Star Wars. We we have like an idea of what good star wars is and so when you do try to like switch it up and like put it in a different genre almost i agree that's why i've been pretty hesitant to watching it because i'm like as much as i like anime i don't really know if it would be my cup of tea you're not really missing out if you don't watch it yeah no, I, I might get around to it but dude i've shown you guys my list of anime that i need to watch i think i'm at like 40 plus anime but i'm not gonna get to like any of that Honestly. Well, that was my hot take for the day, but all right. I'm glad we all had Thank you, Joe. something to say about all it. All right, so maybe the next time we bring this conversation up, they would have watched a few episodes of Demon Slayer. Yeah, we'll find out see. on the next pod. Yeah, we'll so see how it goes. I am, I am willing and open to watch it. All right. Well, welcome everybody back to another episode of the Campfire Council podcast. We're super excited to be here, and today we are going to do a continuation, a part two to Spiritual Discipline. 
And we are also joined by our good friend Noah. Hello. Say hi, Noah. Hello. Hello. How are you guys? That's so good. Not so bad. Yeah. Oh, there you go. And you? And you? I'm, I'm well. I'm <laughs> enjoying this. This is super fun. Maybe a couple people will get that one. I hope so. But yeah, like I said, we'll be, uh, we'll be jumping into part two from the continuation of last week's episode on spiritual discipline. Cool. Let's go. <laughs> That's huge. Oh, that is nice. a sick background. He's got Darth Vader. It's like a side view of Darth Vader. Whoa. It is a good background. That's very cool. Mine's Iron Man. You remember in Iron Man 3 when he's like sitting on the couch? Or oh, he just yeah, has yeah, the yeah. suit like sitting on the couch and he's actually in like the basement. That's what my background is. That's huge. Nice. Massive. So to start us off, I have a question because I know we got into a good conversation last week or excuse me, two weeks ago for our first episode. How is everyone doing with the disciplines that we were talking about that we wanted to improve on? I'll start. Um, so like right after our podcast in our room, we had uh, a Bible that was, you know, on a shelf and I was like, oh, well, no time like the president. So I saw that there. I was like, okay, well, there's a start for a Bible. And then I was actually just texting my mom uh, yesterday. She's like, oh, we have an old study Bible that you could have. Because I, I definitely want to get like a study Bible along with like, you know, a generic Bible because it feel like it helps to have the study Bible and just the normal Bible. But um, yeah, uh, the start of last week, I was all salting for work and uh, I got to share my testimony with one of my coworkers. Mm, that's cool. And um, later in that week, First uh, Peter 4.10 came up as one of the uh, Bible verses of the, er, of the day. And usually, like, it's so easy to skip past those and just, just like, just look at them and read them and, like, okay, cool, that, there's the verse for the day. But um, that one really stood out to me because it was talking about um, using our gifts. And my gift, I would say, is um, the joy, joy from Jesus. Uh, so I got to share my testimony with my coworker and to kind of summarize it, uh, I've been through um, some traumatic things in life, and the, the death of my sister is, you know, very traumatic, but to where I am now from where I used to be, the the joy that has come from this awful situation is it's basically like, like I've always been a joyful person, but going through what I've gone through kind of gave me like a little bit more perspective. Mm. And so... At first, it definitely was not that way, you know. I mean, you guys saw the ups and downs, um, for sure, of going away from Christ and pushing God away. But then after I started to rededicate my life to God more, God has just been blessing me with, with joy and using my testimony through that of, like, I've gone through a traumatic thing. I've tried to do it on my own and push God away. And that clearly did not work, you mm -hmm. know. But now that I've been in my faith more and been going to group and now doing this, it's like it's just rekindled that fire in me. So, yeah, I got to share my testimony with my, my coworker, which is really cool. Um, I'm doing really good job talking right now yeah you are you're great. <laughs> you look good doing it too well, no, I'm just, that's awesome <laughs> i'm trying to like remember everything that happened during the week but mm -hmm. i just got to use uh the bible that i had that, that i had found here to like look at that verse and then look at look at over during the week um basically uh it was just like a way that i got to use that verse in it was, like f that testimony that I got to give for my coworker like foreshadowed that verse and so that was really cool to see like it was the verse of the day and then I dove into the text and there it was so like that was something we talked about last week where I wanted to get back into reading the bible yeah and then a bible was readily available here and then I got to share my testimony and then that verse came up and it all just kind of like flowed together hmm. that's, that's awesome. awesome yeah I know that was Kind of wow. hard to get around Look to, but I was trying. I was trying to find the words, and they weren't there. No, that was awesome. Yeah. Really, yeah, really cool to hear. 
It was. It's cool that God gave you that opportunity to have that moment, and mm-hmm. right after we kind of talked about that. So, right. Yeah. 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 And that's it's so powerful too, being able to to share your story, especially yours, mm-hmm. uh, just in general. Be able yeah. to have those conversations with people and open up and take that step to be vulnerable. Because mm-hmm. I can't imagine that's easy to do. It it comes and goes. It's grief changes, but mm. sometimes it's it's easy to talk about, and others it's not. But yeah, like I said, it just kind of comes and goes. So yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I know last week Luke and I we were gonna hold each other accountable to memorizing some Bible verses. I kind of see on yours. You want to go first, or if you want me to, I can. I want you to go first. Yeah, so last episode, we were talking about things we want to work on for disciplines, and Brandon, you brought up uh, memorizing Bible verses in Scripture, and I've been doing my best to memorize. I know this the first week, I was doing really good with that, and I know this past week was pretty crazy, uh, just trying to get everything set up for the podcast and kind of figuring some stuff out, but memorizing Bible verses does change your day. I know... The last few days waking up, I would look at my my Bible app and I would go through the verses, even if it was just for a few seconds or for a few minutes, just to refresh myself and to have myself thinking about those Bible verses on my way to work or even at work made a difference just in my mood, my attitude and my overall thinking, which makes a big difference. And I encourage anyone out there and everyone in here to to practice memorizing Bible verses in scripture. It's a very useful tool. And maybe in that particular day, you may not need to, maybe in that day, by you memorizing a Bible verse, isn't going to necessarily impact you as much, but maybe it's going to impact someone else. Mm. Maybe someone else needs to hear that Bible verse. And that's a way for you to share that with them. But I, I was able to memorize a few Bible verses. Did you did you want me to? Do it. Go for it. All right. So probably my favorite Bible verse is Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. And then another one, I'm sure a lot of people know, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through him who gives me strength through Christ Jesus. And then another one is 2 Timothy 4.17. Let's see if I can remember this one. But he stood at my side and gave me strength so that the full message might be... I'm going to start that one over. Right. 2 Timothy 4.17. But he stood at my side and gave me strength so that the message might be fully proclaimed and that all the Gentiles might hear. And he delivered me from the lion's mouth. And I'm working on a couple others, but I don't have them quite memorized. But that's, that's where I'm at right now. So. Yeah. I had Philippians 4.13 as well, Um, but I was talking with somebody at my clinical, and we were talking about how this semester is very tough for both of us, Um, easily the hardest semester that I've had so far, and like, I do pray that God pulls me through, but I was talking with her, and she brought up that verse, or she just said, um, I'm just playing this over and over in my head, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, and I really liked that, I was like, where's that from? She goes, oh, that's like a Bible verse that I really like, and I'm like, I really like that too. So I found it. I looked it up later and sure enough, it was that one. I have another one from Philippians 4, which is let your gentleness be evident to all. This one really stuck with me just because, I mean, it's it's pretty, or wait, let your, let your gentleness be evident to all the Lord is near. I think that one is super important just because there's like multiple layers to it. First of all, when it says, let your gentleness be evident, that implies that you already have gentleness mm. instead of just like, like be gentle or whatever. It's implying that you already have gentleness, so let it be evident. And then the Lord is near, meaning that God is watching you. God sees you um, and he can see your, kind, your gentleness being evident. The other one that I memorized was... Um, I think I'm actually worse at remembering the actual scripture, like where it is. I I believe it's in Ephesians. Um, That one is, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only 
what is useful in building others up for their own needs so that anyone who hears it, we know, so that it may benefit those who listen. And then like two verses later, it says, oh, yeah, it's tough memorizing these. Uh, let, mm -hmm. let go of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every other form of mm. malice. So I, I just like that one. I think those, those two verses kind of go really good together. One, one more thing I want to add to Oh, going wait, no, off can we of... wait a second? Sorry, sorry. I just don't want to be making any ruckus. There. Well, My gosh. <laughs> All right, go ahead. My bad. One more, one more thing I wanted to add to when you were talking about the things that you liked about the verse you memorized is in 2 Timothy 4, 17, this is the way it starts out, but he stood at my side and gave me strength. And I was just thinking about just situations like uh, you get in a car accident and something bad happens and you can just remember, but he stood at my side and gave me strength mm -hmm. or there's a bad relationship friend or a significant other, but he stood at my side and gave me strength or whatever situation you are in life, put the, but he stood at my side and gave me strength. And to me, I thought that was super encouraging because that's so true. Even if we're not thinking it or realize it in the moment, it couldn't be more true that, he stood at our side and gave us strength. Yeah. Which through those situations. That? Second Timothy four seventeen. That's that's yeah. awesome. That reminds me of the other one, which is what the main one that I said I wanted to memorize. Um, Proverbs. I'm sure you know this one where it specifically is. I gotta I gotta remember where they're from. But um, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He lets me rest in green meadows, he leads me beside peaceful streams, he renews my strength, he guides me along paths of righteousness, bringing honor to his name. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. So I think that one kind of also like by your side mm -hmm. for you are with I, I will fear yeah. no evil for you are with me. It's kind of cool how Bible verses, you know, you can get multiple. Psalm, that's, Psalm, Psalm 23. Yeah, Psalm, Psalm 23. 23 was, one through four. That's right. Literally, if you did not bring that one up, I was going to say yeah. that one. So that's yeah, good. That's a, that's a pretty fire one. That's like my it's just, life verse for me. It's just cool. It's like gangsta's paradise. Whenever I think like as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. <laughs> what is that? Is that LL Cool J? No, it's Coolio. It's Coolio. Yeah. I, I started started with a C. Yeah, yeah. You're good. You're good. Yeah. And it had cool. Yeah. Work. But yeah, it's like we said last week. It's it's good to have people who can hold you accountable, so that you can yep. carry out those spiritual disciplines. Cause, and we're not always we're not always gonna do it. Um, but it's good to kind of have that accountability just to, someone can be like, Hey, I noticed that you said you're going to do this and you haven't just want to mm -hmm. encourage you. You don't have to be judgmental, you know, fire and brimstone. Yeah, probably. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. Just encouraging them to try to take those steps to, you know, do it. They said on that note, I want to be honest. I, I don't think I implemented any of the disciplines that i said i wanted to That's all right. so mm. i got a lot of i'm actually with to you do. too Nick Milo. <laughs> yeah. so explain i got a lot of work to do stone them and <laughs> you guys <laughs> i'll cast the first stone oh no i won't you got a couple i need to take responsibility you know for my own spiritual journey but insofar as you guys would like to i would ask that you keep me um, accountable at what point does it um I don't, know, I don't know how to say this, but like, how do we tell someone the right way? I mean, I guess it's different for every relationship, but like, I, what's the best way for us to tell you, like, just to be straight up? Because yeah. you know how I am. Yeah. I'll, I'll just straight up tell you. Like, if I'm not going to beat around the bush. No, you don't have to. Right. Okay. Yeah, just be straight up with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. I can do that. I can take it. I know yeah. you can. I think one good way to, I know if you maybe ask that person if there's anything that they notice that I myself could work on. And then I could switch it and ask them the same thing. If there's anything that they could yeah. work on too, I guess is Kinda one way ease into it, you know, instead of just kind of going at them, I don't know if that's a, an aggressive way, but kind of saying, Hey, have you noticed anything that 
you know I should be working on that mm -hmm. I can start applying to my life? And then maybe you could ask them as well. Yeah, I think it's important to ask people around you because not everyone is going to feel comfortable right away coming out and be like, here's what I've noticed that you need to fix. Like some people just, some people are like that, but some people aren't like that as well. And so to give them that like opportunity to be like, hey, I just want to know where I can um, improve in my spirituality. Let me know. Mm -hmm. I think that really, and that's something I don't think I've ever really done. So I guess that's another spiritual discipline that I could try working on moving forward. Yeah. Asking for advice and giving advice too. Yeah. Yeah. Was there like one specific thing this week that, that held you back from, from doing your spiritual discipline or was it, I don't know, tell me what was going on there. It's probably just my overall relationship with God right now mm -hmm. and what's lacking there. Uh, it's also work and, you know, just getting distracted and not paying attention to that. But yeah, uh, yeah it's a combination of things. But ultimately, I just need to pay more attention to it and put more effort into my relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was the, I what was I your spiritual discipline that you wanted to work on I before? Think, I think it was, um, being in the word. Yeah. To yeah. get in the word in the morning, um, or at all, like during the day, but especially in the morning. So I can start off my day like that. And then also like verse memorization and stuff like that. Can I, can I encourage you with that? Sure. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of people have different views on um, the U version Bible app, um, but I like it. It's, I mean, it's the Bible. You can pick whatever translation that you want. Um, but the U version Bible app also has um, plans and devotionals that you can do. So um, I'm doing, I'm doing one right now on, um, this is actually with, Madeline, my girlfriend, uh, for those of you who don't know, um, we're doing one together and it's about having confidence in Christ and it's a 21 day, uh, devotional plan. And so it has, um, little, little message at, at the start and then it has the scripture that goes along with it, a little prayer. And then it gives also a, um, a time for you to like reflect on it and, if you're doing the plan with someone, you can see what they say, or um, so that can kind of also help you build conversation and be like, "Hey, like, oh, I didn't know that's really where you were struggling, or where, um, you know, this is a topic of concern. Like, do you want to talk more about that, or like, we can exchange thoughts, and we don't have to have like a a phone call with that person or whatever, and talk like that. Like, you can talk in amongst the devotional for that day." And so I really do like that. I do um, that every morning before I go to work. And it takes, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes at most. And, um, you know, it's it's not a deep dive into the Bible or into Scripture, um, like reading a couple pages at a time. But it definitely does help you to stay with God's Word. And that kind of sure. reminds Thank us, mm -hmm. or that kind of reminds me of, Every once in a while on Saturdays, we'll all kind of get together. Um, actually, we'll get together after, but from the hours of 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., I gotta watch what I'm saying. <laughs> um, we'll all just be on our own. We'll just do whatever we feel the Spirit is leading us to do. Some of us will read the Bible, some of us will journal, some of us will just be in nature. And then after that, we all come together and we just kind of discuss like what we were compelled to. Um, spend our time doing and I I know right now in my semester like I'm a little bit busy I know everyone else here is busy but like in the next year I definitely want to try doing that at least once or twice a month for sure because I feel like during that time it just feels good to be like all right I'm putting aside all other things I'm spending these two hours purely on God and I know it helps with that accountability because you know that there are other people out there as well doing the yeah. same thing, um, spending their time with God. So you're like, all right, I gotta got push through because two hours, maybe it doesn't seem like a long time, but it, it can, it can when you're when you're doing that, like, it can. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that that's nice to just have that, um, like people around you to talk to about that. Absolutely, with that, your devotion, that essence of community, and 
yeah, having like other spiritual warriors, I guess, mm -hmm. you know, doing the same things that you are. It's cool. I guess yeah. another thing, Milo, is like some is better than none. Kind of like what Noah was saying. Yeah. Because like all it took for me this week was to one, get a Bible. Like that took me seconds, right? <laughs> and then two was to read the verse of the day, you know, a notification on my phone, which led to me like wanting and choosing to open the word and to go and study that, that verse a little more. And then when that verse came up, I re reflected on my week before and then thought about my testimony when I got to share it with my coworker. So it's mm -hmm. cool how like it was presented in, in the podcast here. And then I took the action and then from it, you know, I got to, I got to open up with a coworker and get to know him better and then just share my life. And I think that's really good for me to do yep. is to, to talk about it more and to be open. So I think just taking any little action is, is worthwhile. Cause like I didn't expect any of that to happen and it was, you know, it was pretty random, but I mean, not random, but you know, all for, for sure. all for yeah. purpose. So yeah, I guess I I'll, I'd encourage 100%. you to just take the smallest step because yeah. it, it actually like really affected my week this whole week so mm -hmm. i through. agree yeah. and yeah, if you pick one verse for like even a couple of weeks like that's yeah. one extra verse that you now know so it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be like you have to memorize four to five a week like mm -hmm. just something because the ones that i memorize like a lot of them were just one verse or something but mm -hmm. i was gonna try to recite the verse but i knew i was gonna mess it up so then <laughs> I was that's like, all right no i'm not gonna it's all good yeah. i've definitely been i i would say i'm I'm lacking on the spiritual discipline side of things on insofar as it's a discipline, the intellectual study of Christianity is something that I'm, I've been consistent with, which is not the same as actually like studying the Bible or trying to implement changes into your life. Mm -hmm. So on that discipline, uh, the intellectual side or just studying um, theology or philosophy studying um apologetics those those things i'm pretty consistent at but definitely lacking in other areas mm -hmm. i've def i've gotten a lot out of this book um the spiritual disciplines by dallas willard though it's mm -hmm. it's excellent uh, i it's it, it came as like a, a huge surprise to me because mm -hmm. i didn't i never heard of the book before you luke you posted something in the chat it was like a quote from dallas willard and I knew I knew about him because he was a teacher of one of my favorite Christian philosophers, J.P. Moreland. He was um, like his doctoral advisor, I think, when he got when J.P. Moreland got his Ph.D. Um, so I knew about him, but I didn't know about this book. But it it, it is a very fascinating study of the purpose of spiritual disciplines and I think the word is asceticism or um, like ascetic pra practices, which are sort of like being a monk that we, we, we associate it with uh, the practices that uh, monks would do mm. of fasting and isolation and celibacy, those kinds of things. But it goes beyond that. And definitely one of the interesting things that he goes over in that book, he is a Protestant, but it's interesting that in the book he's critical of the Protestant kind of rejection of these ascetic disciplines because of the Protestant move away toward uh, away from uh, a works interpretation of the gospel and towards like of salvation by faith alone. So there, there was this like historical rejection of the need for these ascetic pra practices like fasting because there was a lot of abuses of that on the Catholic side of things. But one of the mistakes that the Protestant church has made is that it, they overreacted and there's a true purpose to, uh, for these spiritual disciplines in the life of a Christian to grow spiritually. So it's, it's, a, it's very good and um, it's definitely given me some different perspectives on interpreting the New Testament. Mm. Thank you for that. I I, I think I would definitely want to. Yeah, I, I definitely want to. That's something that I definitely um, fall short of is looking at things outside of the Bible because mm -hmm. I'll either depend on the Bible or I'll just kind of like 
write out whatever it's better I want whatever. to just depend on the bible than to yeah yeah if you're I gonna pick it, one if right. you're gonna pick one you should just read right. the bible right right but i think it's good to pull outside sources mm-hmm. what was yours west <laughs> <laughs> Nice job, Wes. He say shoot there. <laughs> oh, shoot. Shoot. I wasn't think it so. something? Um, that was definitely shoot. Wasn't it something to do with uh, like the way you, you spend your time? Like mm-hmm. you wanted to spend a little less time on video games and more time like reflecting and praying. Yeah. So, mm. like when I get home from work or whatever, instead of just simply going on video games and stuff, um, I actually get into the Word for a little bit mm-hmm. before, um, and during the week. Uh, Luke actually sent me the verse, uh, Philippians 4.13, but I, like, never really actually looked, looked that up in, in the Bible. Like, I <laughs> saw the text because it said the full, uh, full verse, so I just didn't really actually look it up in the, in the Bible or whatever. I just kind of, like, looked at it once and then just went down with my, my normal everyday thing, I guess, so. Yeah. Yeah, what I, what I showed Luke is that when you use the you version bible Mm -hmm. what you can do is you can like pick a verse and then it gives you an option to like pick an image to put the uh the scripture over and so then you can save it into your phone and i I highly recommend doing that because then whenever you're on your phone like you could literally put it as your background or something like you could i think you can change backgrounds like daily or hourly or something you wouldn't maybe maybe don't want to do hourly but maybe daily you could do like different bible verses or something like that but I highly encourage that because that's how I memorize them for sure. Because mm-hmm. I think it just makes it easier. You just quickly whip out your phone, like, oh yeah, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And mm-hmm. then you, you know, you can even set your wallpaper to change every time you open it, so you Ooh. can have like a a collage of pictures or Bible or in this case Bible verses. And I almost just dropped my phone. I just caught it in my leg. Oh jeez, that was that's huge. Yeah, isn't that only an iPhone thing? Oh please, and Wes, Wes and I are and not Milo. Um, and Milo. Goodbye, green and text. Um, you were switching to blue. That means nothing to me. <laughs> like anime. <laughs> oh god! Here oh. we come full circle. Here we go. I was on your what side until you mentioned anime. <laughs> Bear me strength. That's the way the news goes. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, like you can create a collage so. Every time I turn on my phone, it can be a different wallpaper, and I don't have to manually change it or anything. So. I should definitely try to do that or something mm-hmm. like right. that. Right, kind of like, like, like what I was telling Milo. It's just like what find one simple thing for yourself, mm-hmm. and whatever it is, and then whether it's what Brandon said or you find something that just works for you. Right. And then just go from there mm-hmm. little bit by little bit. Yeah, mm-hmm. another one you could do is just set an alarm for some time in, like, the p.m., um, and literally I'm sure that God – you know, any progress is progress, so I'm sure God looks down, and if you then look at the verse again, like a second time during the day when your alarm goes off, check it out, look at it, that's good. I think I think mm-hmm. he's like, nice, nice. You you did just give time to him, even if it's like a couple seconds, right. like, it counts. It counts. Mm-hmm. I think one thing, too, it's interesting how we'll, throughout our days and our weeks, we schedule and set aside time for... For work, obviously, the gym, any extra activities, so video games, skating, look at your Pokemon cards, <laughs> watching anime. We'll, we'll set aside time whether we know it or not, and we do those things. And there are certain things that we, each of us have in our life that we will prioritize over others, where we'll more so than not make sure we have time for that. Mm-hmm. And I think... If we can prioritize spending time with Christ, however that looks, being in the Word, praying, meditating, serving, practicing any of these spiritual disciplines, if we can be more intentional of set aside that time, I think we can do a lot more with that. Because mm. like you were saying, Brandon, when we do those Saturday mornings for those couple hours, how that looks, I know when I know I have that two hours set aside where I'm not doing anything for those two hours, I'm very focused and I don't have to worry about rushing to do something else or get stuff done. I know if we can just set aside just certain time throughout our week. So whether it's five, 10, 15 minutes, you know, every other day or once a day where you can say before doing this or after doing that, I'm just going to sit down 
I'm going to try memorizing this verse. I'm going to read this passage. I'm going to pray. I'm going to sit in silence and listen, whatever that looks like. I think we can do a lot more instead of trying to go about our day and then trying to squeeze in Jesus after those things. Mm -hmm. And he's our most important thing in our life. And it's kind of crazy how even myself all the time, I'll push it like to the very last 30 minutes of my day where I'm reading and I start falling asleep. And then I think about the next day, like I gave, that's what I gave God is my, me falling asleep. And I know it's, it's better than nothing, but it's kind of like, I can, I can do better than that. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's kind of, it makes me want to set aside more quality time. So yeah, if we can try to do that, doesn't have to be hours on end, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there where we can intentionally set aside that time to spend time with Christ. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. I was just going to ask you, Noah, is there a spiritual discipline? Cause th that's what we had talked about last week. Yeah. Is there something that you wanted to work on this um, week or? In yeah, general? I can, I can, I can definitely start something this week. Um, some of you guys know, I think, I, maybe all of you, um, but for a while during the summer, I was doing a lot of um, prayer and fasting. So where I would go basically um, 12 hours, 18 hours in a day where I wouldn't eat anything. And I, I would supplement. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, dude, it was, it was a toll. And it took a lot of mental strength. I had a lot of headaches. Um, because I was eating so much beforehand and I mean I, w I will say weed yourself into it um, don't just jump right into yeah I'm gonna do 12 hours of fasting 40 um, days in the desert <laughs> <laughs> right. but a stave. like you know it, it's um, it's definitely gonna take a toll on your body and it's gonna take a toll on your on your uh, mental health too um, I did notice as well because um, food gives you those like happy emotions, right? It, oh, is it what serotonin, endorphins, uh, dopamine, dopamine? That yeah, there you go. I'm I don't know health terms. Okay. Minochlorians. Yeah, <laughs> minochlorians. You were right about those other ones too. There's, oh. They all work together. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and so, just like it made me. Also, like, it made me not ha be as happy because I wasn't getting, like, that boost. And so I did notice if I was not intentionally, like, supplementing my time when I would usually eat a meal, if I'm not praying or I'm not talking with God, like, you know, it can be simple as, like, God, I'm struggling today. Like, I really want to eat some food. And, like, I don't... I'm on the cusp of grabbing an Oreo out of the cabinet and devouring that thing, and then it will turn into a sleeve of Oreos, and then, you know, it's just a downhill spiral from there. <sighs> That's no, the thing you go it. for? It, an Oreo? Oh, dude. <laughs> Oreos. It's his choice to break dude, his Oreos. No, I have, uh, I'm with you on that. Yeah. Oreos, man, that's weakness. Dude, that, and if you put Reese's peanut butter cups in the freezer. Mm. I'll oh, agree with man. that one. Oreos for me, they don't really do it for me. Not, not for me either. I don't know. Mm mm. Viewers, tell us if Oreos do it for you. <laughs> right, leave it in the comments. Do Oreos do it for you? <laughs> That's our next hot take. I will say it might be when you reach a like certain point. Once you get into like ketosis, there is a point in fasting where can you it's actually can ketosis you can is when you switch to fat burning from sugar oh, okay. burning. Gotcha. So a lot of times it'll take, it could take like a day, before like while you're fasting, before um you switch into ketosis. Mm -hmm. But there is like a a point where it actually starts to feel a lot better yeah you feel a lot clearer yeah it did give me i will say um a very clear sound mind um while i was fasting and then like maybe the day after too because it also it refocuses your mind when you're able to eat again you are so much on the point of like thank you lord that i am eating now like thank you for food i went 
you know, all this time or whatever. Like and some people are like, oh, 12 hours. That's easy. I can go like two days. And if you can, more power to you. I'm, I'm not there yet. But uh, um, definitely like it brings you to that sense of like God is our provider and everything in this world is his. And I need to give him the glory in even the smallest things of just being able to be blessed with having food when a lot of people don't even have food all across the world and kind of just re re refocuses your mind back onto God, back on giving him everything. And um, so that's definitely something that I want to get back into. Um, Thanksgiving was a wreck. I, I gorged myself. It was bad. Um, And then obviously Christmas coming up, probably going to do the same thing, but I'm going to really try during this time, um, up until Christmas, like dedicating, you know, a couple hours every day or cutting out just a meal. So like if you're someone who typically, when you get up, you make breakfast right away, like don't make breakfast, try going until lunchtime. If you can, if you can't, that's okay. Like do it in little increments. Like maybe, maybe instead of eating a full breakfast, you do just like a protein bar and you know try to focus that time of like i don't need all this food food is not my necessity i mean we yes we do need it to live but i need god more in my life than i need food and god's going to (laughs) sorry scoot back in here i was trying not to (laughs) notice i don't want to make noise no you're good oh but like having that focus on god is my need i need god all the time um was so much more beneficial for me and just being able to meditate in his word like i just i felt closer than i've ever been when i was doing prayer and fasting and you know make it that that is the importance of it too is you're supplementing food for prayer spending time with the lord that's what's an ask too i know i've Typically on those Saturday mornings when we'll do that set aside the time to spend with with God, I'll typically fast for a couple hours. And mm-hmm. I've done meals before and I've done a, a full day fast before too. But I was going to ask, what do you typically do with your time when you're fasting? So um, a lot of the times, like, you know, I'm usually doing something during the day. So, like, I don't – I'm not really thinking about it. I mean, you've – you feel your tummy grumbling and whatever and it's growling at you and it's like hey feed me um but no during the during like the times when um typically i would eat i would literally find somewhere quiet and i would just sit there be still and you know talk with god and see like you know spend some time be like hey like god you know i i i said what i needed to say like you know, I'm now offering up this time for you to speak to me. Like, because our relationship is a two-way street. It can't just be, oh, I'm just going to keep talking at you, talking at you, and, you know, that's, yay, that's our relation. Like, no, it's, you both have to be talking to each other in order for a relationship to really build. And um, so giving that time up for God as well to really speak into my life and um, sometimes I would read my Bible. Sometimes I wouldn't. Sometimes I would literally just sit there and focus on being in the presence of God. Like, when I say that totally just reshapes your, your thinking, totally refocuses your mind, like, 100%. Like, it's an, um, like, it can almost be like an out of body experience of just like being able to sit with God and just be like, you know, I'm alive. Like, thank you, God, for everything. And so, yeah, I've had a difficult time with fasting in the past. Like, I feel like whenever I fast, I just get really irritable and distracted. And even when I try to like, f- and I haven't done fasting a whole lot, but when I like try focusing back in, I just get like kind of upset or something like yeah um and maybe that's just angry a little hangry yeah i i mean i used to intermittent fast too like in the early years of college and like even with that dude that's i was fasting for what like 
I don't know, like 16 hours maybe. And like even that, by the end of it, I was just so cranky. And so, mm-hmm. I don't know, I would, I do want to try fasting in the future and like maybe going for an extended period of time like that mm-hmm. um, and devoting more time to God. But it's very difficult. It's a very difficult spiritual yeah. discipline to follow because it takes a lot of willpower. Yeah. yeah. Next yeah. time we, we do the couple hours on a Saturday morning, try oh, yeah. maybe try when you wake up do the period of fasting while we you know through 11 o'clock and maybe even through when we meet at like the coffee shop after yeah and that can lead up to like the lunch time so you're fasting for breakfast you're filling that time with whatever it looks like to spend with christ and then at that point you can decide if you want to then go forward and eat again around that lunch time or you could even continue that fast past then but I think that's for me. I'm intentionally set aside that time. And it makes it a little bit easier because I know I'm spending that time I could have been eating to be in prayer, to be journaling, to yeah. listen to worship music, to read the Bible, uh, whatever I'm doing in that in that time, instead of just fasting, but then doing other things to fill my time. Because mm-hmm. I know I don't want to fast and then go do other things throughout my day i feel like that defeats the purpose of fasting yeah. you know i want to fill that time with spending good quality time with with christ mm-hmm. yeah should we maybe go through and kind of um do like a, a follow-up to our spiritual discipline so like we kind of just like continue our spiritual discipline but just tweak it a little bit for this next week so like <laughs> just take it, it. You, you're gonna take what we said yeah and you're gonna Throw a little schlitz on there. Well, yeah. Little, 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 schlitz. little schlitz action. I just wanted to make a quick note. Go for it. Um, from my experience, it makes it easier to fast if you kind of prepare your body for it by yeah. um, eating low carb for a while mm-hmm. and getting your body to running on, or getting your body used to running on fat. It's easier for you to, st- for your body to like step into that once you mm-hmm. st- uh, start fasting. Like a day before? I would say like a week. Like start really? like yeah. reducing your, your, carbs a lot and your body will more easily switch into ketosis i mean if you want to make it difficult for yourself then you could just like stay on a high carb diet beforehand but it does make it easier um another thing is electrolytes are super important while you're fasting if you want to avoid headaches Mm -hmm. you definitely gotta um, drink a lot of water because one thing is uh carbohydrates help your body retain water Mm-hmm. But once you like your body's going to utilize your glycogen and deplete your carbohydrates like really quickly while you're fasting. Mm-hmm. And so you're going to lose a lot of water in the process. Yeah. So the uh, electrolytes will help you uh, retain water. So yeah. definitely helps with with the headaches. And a lot of what cause th- causes the headaches is that you're dropping your blood sugar. Right. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I'm in nursing school and I don't know as much as this guy right here. I'm you know so guy. much more about A and P than I do. It's crazy. About what? What's that? Uh, anatomy and physiology. Sorry. What? No way, dude. No, there's no way. Dude, I whatever just know you just said. What? No way. I just know about this little thing, dude. You always do this. <laughs> <laughs> Milo is the smartest person that no, I know. No, it's just, not true. <laughs> I just know. I, you it's both are smart. It's because Thank it was something both. that I I got into. I was doing. Uh, keto for a long time oh yeah that, I, that was another thing i wanted to say Weightlifting makes it way harder oh, gosh. Oh, to yeah. not eat yeah. way harder if i yep. if i yep. don't lift weights like if i just do cardio for a few days i don't have to think about food in the morning True. like i'll yeah. easily like fast until lunchtime or I, even further if i uh, do legs the day before i'm only thinking about food in the morning. <laughs> no, nah, dude, you gotta go. You gotta go into a leg day empty stomach. That's exactly. what I did this that's, morning. That's I, I prefer I it that way. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're that, serious? No, I'm 100 percent serious. I, really? I, yeah. yeah. I need to it have helps. an empty stomach. I, I need. I need all the help I can get. I yeah. Need my muscles just full of glycogen. Really? Yeah. I just feel too heavy, and then and then I feel like I'm. I get I f- nauseous. I feel like I'm gonna throw up. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like what helps me is like watching anime beforehand. Like I, that <laughs> really. Oh no. <laughs> that really, you know, boosts. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I do is I put Got anime it. on to get me out of the house to get to the gym. Mm-hmm. Right. And then I listen sure to I country music on the way to the gym. <laughs> oh, country. Oh. Yeah, dude. 
I listen oh, to some uh, Joey. The more you talk, Randy Hauser. Sure, Randy Hauser and uh, Dude, Morgan good. Wallen, J- whatever his name is. Do you Jason, have Jason Aldean? Jason Aldean. I've Luke, been Luke starting Ryan. to listen to, listen to so, some uh, Chris Stapleton. He's actually, yes. he's actually really, really, really good. good. Is that country? Really yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah it's traitor. It's he, country. He's not like super Brandon. deep country. I I, he doesn't have like a super deep like a country <laughs> twang, I guess. But it, he's really good. Yeah. He's super talented. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's almost like a like. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> that actually went really far. Um, I was aiming for his face. <laughs> yeah, but you missed because I have a force field. So. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. You use the force? No, I have a force field. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So are you talking about, bringing it back, are you talking about um, like what we've done this week or? Or yeah, just like g- a small change that we want to make to our uh, spiritual disciplines. Uh, I think personally, I, I just want to get a little bit smoother. Like when I was um, saying the the one verse, I just want to get a little bit smoother with that one and then maybe adding on like one verse a week or mm-hmm. something um, or maybe one verse every other week if it's a little bit longer. Um, mm-hmm. So I think that's how I would kind of tweak it. But the thing with me is that if I stop looking at something for a little bit, I'm going to forget it. So I'm going to have to keep looking over the verses that yeah. I've already memorized You're the same way. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna forget them, but fair enough. I'll keep we'll, looking over them. We'll also get to a point too with memorization. Maybe not with all the verses, but the ones that really s- stand out to us. I think over time, mm-hmm. they will be forever memorized. Yeah, yeah. that's maybe I, not kind of how I feel. About maybe not for verse. all of them, but if we can really take, it might take months, it might take years, it might take a few days. But I think if we can really just go over it, I think we can mm-hmm. have them memorized forever. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Another good tip for that. Um, there is a, I'm, geez, I'm all about the apps today. Um, apps? The, the Bible memory app. Literally just type that in. And um, I just recently started using that um, with Pastor Marcus. Well, I mean, I'm not on his team for it, so I'm not actually like doing it with him. But um, he got me hooked on it. And you can pick however many verses you want to do in a day you can say like oh like i want this verse to be fully memorized by next week thursday or whatever so um it can also like test you on stuff and make sure you're like you're saying it correctly and it, it's it's really a helpful app and it can send push notifications and um that's another useful tool like and it's on your phone and for a lot of us we're on our phones a good amount of the time mm. And so um, it's just another good way to help you guys with Bible memorization rather than just um, willpower and Mm -hmm. relying on our own strength. Yep. What's it called again? Uh, The Bible Memory App. The Bible Memory App. Schlitz. Schlitz app. I do have a a quick uh, quote that I want to, to throw in here. Uh, this one's going to be by Richard J. Foster. It says, God has given us the disciplines of the spiritual life as a means of receiving his grace. The disciplines allow us to place ourselves before God so that he can transform us. Mm-hmm. And I saw that the other day, and I like that, what he said within that quote. And just how it says it's it's a means of us receiving his grace. I think... God doesn't want us to just practice these disciplines for no reason. There is reason behind these disciplines, and I think we need to remember that too because there's definitely days where disciplines aren't meant to be easy. Yeah. And I know it's not always rewarding. I feel like sometimes, more than not, it doesn't feel rewarding, maybe in that moment. But God has these disciplines for a reason and he wants us to practice them and it's going to help us grow closer to Christ and it's just going to just help us overall with our faith and with relationships and just how we go about our daily lives in general. There was a like Instagram video or something you sent me. This was like, oh boy, this was like two years ago or something or you showed us and it was about how you go to the gym multiple times a week in order to get stronger. And in the same way, you have to, you can't just, like if you went to the gym only on Sunday, you wouldn't 
really grow. And so you have to keep looking it over and over. That was that was a quote by me. That was your quote. Look at this guy. It was uh, get this guy a book. <laughs> I remember it. Write a book, dude. Pretty much sum it up. Write that down. Write that down. <laughs> if you were to any insert any hobby, passion, interest. If you were to, for my example, is if you were to go to the gym. For excuse me, let, I'm start over. If you were to go to church for one hour a week on Sundays and that's it, how do you expect yourself to to grow, to learn, to grow close, closer to Christ? Mm -hmm. And now picture the same thing with any hobby, interest, like that you have. If you were to do that only once, once a week for an hour, how are you going to grow and become better at that hobby or interest that you have? And as Christians, it's, it needs to be more than just once an hour or one hour a week. We need to implement those things multiple times if we want to grow, if we want to yeah. become better in our faith, as, especially as young men. Absolutely. Yeah, and that can that can come in different forms too, just continuing the uh, gym analogy. Like there's not one way to do the gym. You could do CrossFit. But like, why would you do that? But like you we're can do cut, we're cutting that part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my bad, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> you, you could can't alienate our audience. Yeah, bro. my bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> None of us here do CrossFit, thank God. You could do oh, cardio or like <laughs> <laughs> No, no, it's not time. Um Powerlifting is the only yeah way. yeah. There's like there's like powerlifting, bodybuilding. You know, you could just do cardio, power building, power building or power building, yeah. or weight. Wait, what are we saying? Lift, weight training, weight training. There we go. Yeah. Or weight building, where you just make the weights bigger. Mm, I like that one. There you go, dude. You see, <laughs> you're just stacking That's weights so on big. top of each other. Um, <laughs> but it, um, but it just kind of just show like there's not one way to do it. So you could grow spiritually in a week by talking with somebody as Joey did, or you could memorize verses like you and I did. Um, you know, there's different ways that you can, you can do the devotion with people and yeah. like, there's not one way to do it. It's just kind of whatever works best for you. That, Cause I think we need to make this a little bit more attractive, this whole like spiritual disciplines, because that's why we get caught up in other things like um, <laughs> watching anime. This is the only analogy I can really think of right now. I'm sorry. Video games. Video games. There mm -hmm. we go. There's one. Licking rocks. Lick you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like that, those kind of things are attractive. <laughs> sure. Oh, sure. And so we need to do our best to, like, make follow. I'm not even going to defend myself right now. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not doing it. Like we need to make it more attractive in our week because when you just look at it and you're like, oh man, I'm going to take time out of my day to just sit down and like read this one verse over and over and try to memorize it. Like it, it makes it difficult. Mm -hmm. So just, yeah, making it, making it a little bit easier by making it more attractive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Appealing. Right. Maybe as appealing as licking rocks. Yeah, we'll get that. We'll get that. We'll we'll get into that one maybe a different week. Yeah, yeah. another hot, hot, point, but hot take. <laughs> another <laughs> hot take. Yeah. Is that a normal thing people do? No, no, not really. Okay, good. Yeah, because I don't. I do. I do have a verse <laughs> I wanna I wanna throw in there as well. This is Hebrews twelve eleven. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. I thought that was just a, a good time to throw that in there. We were just talking about it It might not seem pleasant at the time. Like you're saying, we need to make it more attractive, more appealing. And even like it says, it doesn't seem pleasant at the time, but painful. And I know it's not, it's not necessarily like a physical pain. Maybe for fasting, you can physically feel that yes. is something that's real. But a lot of these disciplines are are mental, are spiritual, mm -hmm. and in a way, it, it it is painful mentally when 
we're going against our our daily our normal daily lives we're going against society we're going against the nature of how we are human yeah you know we're yeah we desire we desire to be in comfort and when we go outside of our comfort zone that's hard we don't like it Mm. and it's just encouraging how to say how later on we're producing harvests of righteousness for those who are being trained by it. And like I said a little bit early, a little bit ago, these disciplines aren't just here for us just to do it. There's a reason and a purpose behind us practicing these disciplines. And I think that's super important to remember. And I think that can make it more appealing, more attractive. And the more we do it, the more we train with these disciplines, the better we're going to be at it. And I think, Overall, the more we're going to crave to grow closer and to learn more about Christ. Mm. Absolutely. I have a quote for you guys. Um, so there's a philosopher uh, named David Hume. I think he was probably 19th century or uh, 18th century philosopher. Um, but he was a agnostic, if not an atheist. I'm not sure like 100% what he was, but uh, definitely had a lot of critiques of Christianity. But he had this quote, and it was it was in um, Dallas Willard's book on uh, spiritual disciplines. And I'm curious what you guys think of it. So the quote is, uh, the whole train of monkish, monkish virtues. So what he's talking about is like spiritual disciplines, the ascetic like life of a monk, of um, secluding themselves from society and uh, denying themselves the pleasures of a normal existence right Mm -hmm. so he says the whole train of monkish virtues are everywhere rejected by men of sense because they serve no manner of purpose neither advance a man's fortune in the world nor render him a more valuable member of society neither qualify him for the entertainment of company nor increase his power of self-employment dang it's pretty intense yeah (laughs) whoa so he definitely didn't agree that we should um, try to employ these spiritual disciplines in, in our life. Mm-hmm. But I think the, the underlying assumption there is that what we should do is seek enjoyment and happiness in this life. Yeah. Yeah, and by creating these spiritual disciplines now, it's something that we can continue to bring forward like in our lives. Like The earlier start, the better. Um, like when I was talking with that one person who brought up that Bible verse, the um, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I found myself, I talked to like three other people I brought that verse up to. And it was pretty much in the same scenario just with school and like how difficult it was. And I was just like, just got to know, like through Christ, we can do all things. And it was just kind of cool. Like when we're just kind of in regards to memorizing Bible verses, um, maybe in a moment it doesn't really hit home for you like right away. Maybe it does, and maybe that's why you memorized it, but maybe you're just picking one. But then later on down the road, you approach somebody or you're talking with somebody and then you're able to recall that and bring it back up. I think it's just Mm -hmm. kind of like a, you know, something in your back pocket that you'll be able to just Absolutely. And you gotta make the sound with it too. Like when you look at it, I'll be like, you want some scripture? Some scripture? <laughs> you just walk. You just walking down the script, uh, the street. Scripture. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That kind of actually sounds bad. It sounds like it's painting a bad picture, but I'll stick to standing in the milk crate screaming. <laughs> 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 That's really doing the Lord's work. Uh, nice. No, that was good. Yeah. Mm. <sighs> so. <laughs> so yeah. So. Uh, are there any are there any other spiritual disciplines people want to implement this week? I mean, I was just gonna kind of add like it's me and Joey's were uh, we were like talking about earlier how it's like so easy to like just do what you want when you get home from work. We were like working a f- uh, full full day of work, <laughs> and, um, and then just like getting home and you just want to relax and just do what you want to do. You, you almost feel like feel pretty lazy. I guess, like you don't really want to do anything. 
Mm-hmm. That's definitely how I feel all the time, and I think that's why I'm I'm kind of failing at that uh like the spiritual discipline and stuff. So I think I need to do what you guys said, like set an alarm. Like I'm gonna do kind of what I want to do, kind of unwind from work, and then have that alarm set, and then I can like get into the word, maybe memorize some verses and stuff. Um, but just yeah, kind of like that. But like yeah, I definitely feel like work kind of drains me a little bit and then that's kind of takes away from any kind of spiritual discipline or mm. getting into the word and thinking about god and stuff yeah especially so. in the environment that you're in like mm-hmm. the the work environment itself um working in the trades and working in manufacturing like mm-hmm. there is n- you don't see there's not a lot of christianity <sighs> stuff or there's, yeah the light of christ doesn't really um seem to be an appealing factor Mm -hmm. to a lot of people in manufacturing sector and um that can be that can be really hard when you're one of the only people in that environment that is trying to shine the light right when it feels like all it is is just pure darkness Mm -hmm. he speaks from experience absolutely i also work in the trades so yeah it's um you know a lot of a lot of brokenness a lot of guys who um, have had failed marriages and like they just have problems with you know alcohol and drugs and you know some a lot of them in the prison for you know the mistakes that they made mm-hmm. in their lives and just how the devil can ensnare you and trap you into falling into the desires of the flesh and um, so yeah it can be it can be sometimes a hostile environment too mm-hmm. um i notice i notice for me like if i don't take time um even when i'm there like for myself like because sometimes i want to like spend my break with some of the other guys and be like hey like you know like what are you guys talking about or whatever like i i say it exactly like that yep. <laughs> just hey what are you guys doing hey guys um <laughs> They're he's be very popular at work. Yeah. yeah I'm very <laughs> and he says, and then he says, I have to go read scripture. <laughs> scripture. <laughs> Why did I turn into a Muslim man? No, that's, no, not that's Muslim. Filipino, buddy. Oh, <laughs> Filipino. Not Filipino. I don't know my accent. Filipino. Sorry. 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 It wasn't great. I'm gonna get canceled. <laughs> to, to, uh, oh, it wasn't a great impression. My bad. Yeah. But like that's um, you know, like I want to spread the love of Jesus to those guys, but it's not always a time for me to do it and so i've realized too like i need to take a take my own time out of that environment and really recenter myself um because if i don't like how am i going to keep spreading the love of jesus in an environment when my cup is empty i got to go back to the source you know Mm -hmm. like that's what's important you got to recenter yourself you got to refill your cup in order to pour into others and mm-hmm. to come back to to us the cool thing about everyone in this room here and like the rest of people in our, the bible study that we're in and just people in the community that we have we have the responsibility to hold each other accountable and Absolutely. i know that we've been all working on that as well like even just sending messages or a phone call or conversations within chats or in person and i hope you guys hold me accountable for the things that I want to work on, need to work on. And I hope that I hold you guys accountable for the same thing. And I think that's a really important thing to do and it can be very helpful and useful. And if we can, I'm, I'm going to fail by myself almost all the time. And having, having this group of people, having this podcast, being in Bible study, going to church, those things are super important. And, if we can continue to do that, we'll be one more step on the right track. I think you don't even need to be a crunch Christian to know that like you need to set yourself up with like minded people and people that are gonna push you. So mm-hmm. like if you're watching this right now and you're not Christian, you sh- I think it it's known that like you just need to be around people that have similar values w- uh, than you and then like people that are gonna like push you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because if you don't have that accountability then yeah good luck right yeah 
I just have I just have David Goggins just playing in my head all the time. Who's gonna carry the boat? Like <laughs> someone's gotta do in it. the logs. In the logs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I'm I'm super excited once again to one to have all of you guys here. I know it's been a it's been an interesting journey. I know Mila Mila and I have been uh figuring out things with this and it's been ups and downs, but overall it's been a super fun experience, at least for me. I hope it's been fun for you guys mm-hmm. too. And I hope it's enjoyable for any of the viewers out there. And I that's hope our, that we that's can our last one. Yeah. All, all the one viewers. <laughs> this one. is the finale. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> like I said, I hope last. we can, you know, continue to have these great conversations and hopefully uh, it'll mean something to the people listening or watching. But, mm-hmm. you know, like I said, having this, this group of, you know, you guys here, has been really great and I'm super excited to see where this goes and what, you know, what can happen and mm-hmm. how we can hold each other accountable, how we can, we can hang out, we can laugh, we can have fun and we can do those things. But at the same time, we can grow closer together mm-hmm. in relationships, but also more importantly, grow closer to Christ. And that's the ultimate goal. Mm-hmm. And I'm excited to go on that journey with you guys. So I hope we can all, Kind of get in there and, and do that. Absolutely. But uh, yeah. don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Yes. Or else. And we'll get shot down Pew. by a TIE fighter. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Campfire Council podcast.